Well, there's been reaction across Europe and the United States. We're going to have two correspondents following developments. Mike Hanna is in Washington, D.C. First, we're going to go to Sonia Gallego in London. Uh, a lot of European countries, allies of Ukraine, giving them uh, cash and also military support. What's been the reaction across European capitals? And as you can imagine, all eyes are uh, on the situation, the ongoing situation, the series of events that have been occurring in Russia. Uh, first of all, uh, the British government, uh, which uh, convened uh, an emergency committee, um, is to discuss the ongoing situation, uh, has happened already on Saturday. Uh, the British Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, did say that he is going to be speaking with other allies and reiterated that all parties in the conflict in Russia should do their utmost to avoid avoid uh, harm to civilians. Uh, looking at the defence side of things, the British Ministry of Defence uh, in a regular intelligence update had stated that, uh, according to it, it, its own information, the loyalty of the Russian security forces and especially that of the Russian National Guard is going to be key to how the crisis plays out and it represents the most significant challenge to the Russian state in recent times. It also uh, stated that with very limited evidence of fighting between Wagner and the, uh, and the Russian security forces, they some have likely remained passive and acquiescing to Wagner. That's, again, according to the British Ministry of Defence. Uh, elsewhere across uh, the European Union, the uh, president of the European Council, uh, Charles Michel, the European Council, of course, the organisation that uh, unites the leaders of the European Union countries, stated that they are also uh, looking at this situation very closely and also also that they're on and also uh, pledging their unwavering support uh, for Ukraine and the president Volodymyr Zelensky. Uh, similar echoes of this occurring across uh, the, the, Euro the European Union countries as well. Italy traditionally kind of s taking a softer stance on um, Russia regarding uh, sanctions has interestingly also said that while it is monitoring the events, um, it's showing that its assault on Ukraine is causing instability uh, within Russia. Meanwhile, uh, the German foreign minister has uh, met with counterparts of the G7 to discuss the issue more closely. They're also monitoring it as well as are other countries, especially that are geographically closer uh, to uh, the Ukrainian border. Of course, they have uh, more of a security issue there, but uh, all countries have, uh, within the European Union, avoided uh, or certainly urged citizens not to travel to that area. But all in all, they've just literally passed on Wednesday uh, another set of sanctions which is affecting how other nations trade uh, with uh, uh, the European Union to make sure that uh, they aren't, Russia isn't uh, having any other uh, issues with goods that may be uh, passing on to them. So all in all, very, very close monitoring of the situation of the events and of course the hours uh, and the days to come will be uh, very important for how the European Union reacts to those events. Sonia, thank you very much for breaking down that European reaction to, for us. Sonia Gallego in London. We're going to go to Mike Hanna in the American capital. Mike, the impression I get from talking to Sonia, talking to, to uh, Jonah, in, even in Ukraine, is that there is very much a, a kind of wait-and-see policy at the moment. Um, how is the US reacting to all of this? Well, very much that wait and see policy, but very, very closely monitoring as the situation there uh, transpires. The Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has held phone calls with all his G7 counterparts, all the US allies, including the UK, Japan, Germany, France. So this is a sign of exactly how seriously the US is taking the situation. The fact that the Secretary of State is in telephone contact with all the allies, coordinating a response to the ongoing events uh, within Russia and on its borders. Now, within Congress, there has been overwhelming support for Ukraine and its ongoing struggle with Russia for a long period of time. Uh, some Congress members tweeting out that the Ukraine should seize the opportunity uh, to make gains in the battlefield. However, within the Biden administration, there's a degree of caution about this. They are deeply concerned about military splits within Russia, the impact that that would have on the U.S. and indeed on the entire globe. Uh, so that is one of the reasons why the whole situation is being watched very, very quickly, because of that type of ripple effect 
that could happen across the world uh, with any dismembering of central power within Russia or any uh, non-political handover or seizure of power. Now, that may be a long way down the road, but certainly that is a concern, and that is as well something that the U.S. military planners are looking at. What would be the consequences of the splintering within Russia? All of this a massive cause for concern. Uh, the U.S. President Joe Biden was due to travel to Camp David within a few hours. It's not certain whether he's still going to carry on with that meeting, but obviously the U.S., both political and military, are closely monitoring the situation. Mike, thank you very much indeed. That's Mike Hanna bringing us up to date in Washington, D.C.